So today, I got to tell you on this video, it was very important for me to create this one, but I wasn't sure what to call this video. It was a bit of a fuzzy concept that actually started getting more and more clear as I talked to more and more people. Originally, I was going to call it the privilege of being a happy person, but that didn't quite hit the tone because it really is the privilege of being a person for whom things in life have gone really smoothly or really well. So the title is crap, okay? But bear with me because when it comes down to it, I guess this is a video about a very, you know, about a form, a kind of a form of enabling, I guess. So let me start here because this was probably one of the more compelling anecdotes. I talked to someone a while ago who was telling me about how a friend of hers who had a great marriage, healthy and thriving children, that that woman, that healthy, happy woman was going to host a dinner party. The person I was talking to is a survivor of some pretty significant narcissistic abuse. The happy friend was going to invite a group of people to her house for this party, including one particularly difficult person who the friend, the happy friend, didn't want to leave out. And the happy friend wanted her to see some people in the group who were going to be in from out of town. The oh-so-cheerful person throwing the party was excited because her husband was going to cook and her young adult children were home and these friends were going to be in from out of town. And she sort of wanted to host and entertain and sort of showcase her house and I guess her life. The difficult person who was going to be invited to the party was somebody who's actually been nice to the person throwing the party, quite frankly, because the person, that happy person throwing the party, was financially quite successful, largely due to her spouse, but she was well regarded in her community and sort of, again, had this kind of really well put together, perhaps even enviable life. However, the person I was talking to, talking to, the one who has been through narcissistic abuse, had told me that in the past, this difficult guest who was invited to the party was quite cruel to her, actually quite enabling and gaslighting and mean, especially when she was talking to this person about her own narcissistic abuse experiences. The difficult friend invited to the party was someone who's minimized it, told this person that they were too sensitive. And this was a track record. This difficult person had always been hard on the person I was talking to who had gone through narcissistic abuse. The oh-so-happy friend throwing the party knew all of this because the person going through narcissistic abuse had told her. The person going through the narcissistic abuse experience struggled with whether she should go to the party or not. It was all but guaranteed that the difficult person who was being invited to the party would corner her probably when no one was around, and say, again, more nasty things to her. It was always what this person did. So the million-dollar question is this. Should that person who went through narcissistic abuse, should she go to the party? Should this woman, who has been through such a recent and raw episode of narcissistic abuse that has upended her life, go to this party, which she knew was important to the host, who's a friend of hers, but that would almost certainly result in her getting hurt once again by the difficult person who was invited. So drop it in the comments. Should she go to the party or not? Let's face it. Cognitive dissonance is a monster. And ultimately, she felt guilty at the idea of not going. She felt that the friend throwing the party has been good to her and had been good to her when she went through all her stuff. And she didn't want to mess her friend's party up by not going. So she decided to go. While I talked to her, I could see in her face the conflict she had gone through. And I ruefully thought, ah, oh, God, wow, what a privilege it must be to be the person whose life just going so well. The privilege of the person whose life is a well-oiled machine. That party throwing person, that party throwing friend of hers is really quite privileged, isn't she? She was never gaslighted or she was never cruel to the person who had been narcissistically abused. She was not, she had never hurt her, but she never really did fully see what happened to her friend got narcissistically abused, did she? Because if she did, she would have thought twice about asking her friend who had just been through hell and back 
to come to this party that would require her to be in the presence of a really difficult party, I'm sorry, a really difficult person who had been unkind and mean to her in the past. The person who was talking to me, the person who has been through narcissistic abuse, it's interesting. She wasn't at all angry that the host invited the difficult person to the party. Her attitude was that it's her party. She can invite who she wants. But where the woman I was talking to was more frustrated is that she was then put in this position of having to potentially say no because the host, who knows how difficult the difficult person is, didn't want to or couldn't be bothered to see the situation in a whole, whole way. The host had options. She could have, A, not invited the difficult person, or B, given her narcissistically abused friend an out right? Say, ah, oh, it's not that important. We'll figure it out. But in the privilege of this host's happy, non-abusive life, she didn't see it or she chose not to see it or she didn't have to see it. The post-narcissistic abuse landscape is tough. You get out of the relationship or you finally learn what it is and you're literally dazed. You don't know who to trust. You judge yourself. You blame yourself. You think you're being too cynical. You aren't sure if you aren't be, if you aren't sure if you're being too cautious or you're being not cautious enough. You're sorting through your family, your friends, your acquaintances. You sometimes feel like you don't know which way is up. But this relates to the privilege of the person who has a life that runs well and that runs smoothly and is pretty free of any form of regular toxic abuse in their lives. Because these folks, and I've, I've alluded to this before, these kinds of people are a very unique form of enabler. They don't always have the dysfunctional bells and whistles of the naive or self-serving or Pollyanna enablers. They just really are privileged. It's like a wealthy person, right? Rich folks are privileged. So they can't understand why you can't take an entire day a day off from work for a spa day or why you haven't traveled to a certain place or stayed in some fancy hotel or why you don't have someone clean your house every day. Their privilege, the, the privilege of rich people, I guess, insulates them from getting it. And that can seem like a lack of empathy. And sometimes I'm sure it is, but sometimes these privileged folks are just clueless. And that cluelessness comes from not having anything approximating the experiences that other people are having. The privileged of the people with the figured out lives, it's something quite similar to what we see in rich people, right? In this case, the people with the figured out lives, they don't have toxic people around. They kind of won a life lottery. Maybe they have really great loving parents or really friendly family systems, or they get along with their siblings, or they typically had enough resources, or they have great marriages or great long-term partnerships. If they have children, those children are doing well. And if they didn't have children, they're good with not having had children. How they got to this well-running life whether it was luck, whether it was just great choices, whether it was having resources, and more likely a mix of all of the above, it does mean that it is hard for these people to fully understand the whole toxic relationship thing. So let me ask you this then. Do you have these kinds of sort of privileged, everything runs well in your life, people in your lives? Has the, how does their inability to understand your narcissistically abusive relationships impacted your relationship with them? Drop that in the comments because it would be interesting to see if this sort of hazy idea of mine is actually making sense to you. I got to tell you, I run into this all the time. When people ask me what I do for a living, they'll say, huh? I don't get it. This whole narcissism thing, that's enough for a whole job? They can't imagine that there's a whole large number of people out there who would try to destroy a partner in a divorce. They can't believe that a person isn't best friends with their mother. They are shocked when they hear that someone was bullied in the workplace. They simply are unable to understand the concept of gaslighting. They tend to think that it's just all a big misunderstanding. 
these are people that at one level can have a kind of a Pollyanna feel, but it often happens because they're insulated by this life that runs really well and doesn't have toxic people in it. The problem is that they do not always make choices. These privileged people do not always make choices or decisions that take into account other people's difficult experiences with narcissistic or toxic people, despite hearing about your story of narcissistic abuse, which really, again, these aren't bad folks. They actually do try to understand, but then they don't extend the dots and say, yikes, maybe I shouldn't ask this person to get together with a toxic friend just because I'm having a party. In other cases, it may, be, it may be that, for example, a golden child wants to make a scapegoat come to a party where the toxic parent will be, or a person in the workplace who tries to really sort of encourage a person who was harassed by the management to show up at a work celebration. These folks, these privileged, sheltered folks may be willing to hear your struggle, but ultimately coddled by their privilege of their lives that run so well, they aren't able to say, I don't know, maybe I, perhaps I just need to protect this person who has endured this, this emotional abuse and not put them in the crosshairs of a potentially abusive situation just because it works for me. It can feel invalidating when you are put in these difficult choice situations over and over again. When you first come out of a narcissistically abusive situation, it can feel hard to set boundaries, to say no. Your bandwidth is depleted after going through these relationships and to still have the people around you making careless decisions and finding yourself in the hot seat again, it really sucks. You may even want to be kind to this privileged friend or family member and show up at their event because you are nice, but it may even be to your detriment because the scars, especially if it was you recently left a narcissistic relationship, can be really tender. So I'm asking you here, please make me a little promise. I obviously can't find you to hold you to it, so let's consider it a pinky promise. Going forward, Please try and choose you. Your friend isn't going to die if you don't show up at her friendly little party. But by not going, you can learn the fine art of self-protection. Or if you do go, just plan on leaving early. Because after years of enduring rage, you don't need to voluntarily put yourself into a space where you know it's going to happen with someone else. A good friend will understand it. A clueless or a petty friend won't. And then that becomes a major red flag and a wake-up call for a new boundary you might need in this friendship. Narcissistic abuse is an eye-opener and not always a nice one. It makes the world seem more difficult and unkind and reminds you that sadly there are times in your life that you are the only one who has your own back. But after what you have been through, got to tell you, a night at home, binge watching something, reading a book, cooking a new recipe, or perhaps just time with a healthy friend is going to be far better for you and your healing than sucking it up, showing up at some party or get together and running the risk of playing through that damn emotional abuse or gaslighting sequence again, or being raged at again, just to please a clueless friend. Your privileged friend is not going to get it. Lucky them. They don't need to get it. You never, though, need to rationalize your own form of self-protection. It's a steep learning curve, but you can get there. The harm that comes to you from the raging, difficult person at the party is far greater than any harm that will fall upon your friend hosting the party by not having you as one of the guests show up. Please trust me on that. And on the off chance that any people watching this video are the ones living in that really kind of nice, soft privilege of your well-running life, 
can you please pay forward some of that well-oiled life and please be aware that it isn't such a smooth ride for everyone. Be mindful of how you issue invitations, of when you push people to show up to things when it's not necessarily good for them, and be graceful when people say no. They may very well have good reasons. So please let me know if you found this useful, this video useful, give it a thumbs up. And also, I ask you this question, have you ever found yourself in a situation like I described? If so, drop a comment, let us know. And then as always, if you're interested in this channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, because the more people who understand this may be, the more people who will be less likely to issue you an invitation to a party. It's not so good for you. Thanks again.